But here's a Core 4 revision video. I'm going to try and cover everything you need for Core 4 vectors in 15 minutes. Make sure you watch this, make sure you make revision cards, make sure you learn everything in this video. If you need more help, I've done 10 detailed videos going through everything you need on vectors on my channel, but this is a, a condensed, concise summary of everything you need to answer exam questions. Okay, first, positions and vectors. Everything, imagine everything is in three dimensions, okay? And let's say we had a point in space, three, two, six, okay? That means x. Uh, that means three along the x-axis, two up the y-axis, and z into the page, as it were. And imagine we had uh, the origin somewhere here. Now, that's a coordinate. I just want to point out the difference between a position, this is a position in space, and or that's a coordinate. Now the vector that gets you from here to here, well to get from 0, uh, zero, zero, zero to this point, it would be the vector 3, 2, 6, and we would write it as a column. 3 along the x-axis, 2 along the y-axis, and 6 along the z-axis. And this here is called a position vector. And it's telling you the direction to move from 0, 0, 0 to the coordinate 3, 2, 6. Okay, so there's a difference between a point in space and a position vector. And a position vector is how to get to that point from the origin. So it's a vector to get to a point from the origin, which is 0, 0, 0. Okay, first thing to point out. <clears throat> Next, the magnitude of a vector. So the magnitude of a vector, say we have the origin again, and that's 0, 0, 0, and we have, let's keep the same thing, 3, 2, 6 here, the point 3, 2, 6 over here, and that's point OA, let's say, that's point A, and that's the vector between them, so the vector is 3, 2, 6. Okay, and we might call this little vector little a. Okay, the magnitude of a is the length of this line. So the magnitude is the length of the vector. Okay, and the way we do it when it's a position vector, what we do is we write the magnitude of a, you can write it like that, or you can write it as the magnitude of O to A, and that's going to be equal to 3 squared plus 2 squared plus 6 squared, all of that square rooted. So it's like Pythagoras' theorem, but it's in three dimensions, and we'd have ourselves um, the square root of 49, if we did that, the square root of 49, which is equal to 7. So the modulus of this vector or the length of that vector is seven units. So that's what the magnitude of a vector is. It's the length of the position vector from the origin to the point. Okay, the distance between two points. Now suppose we had a point in space, let's say, I don't know, one, two, three, and we had another point in space, let's say, four, five, and six, okay, as follows. And we want to find the distance between those two points. Now, firstly, we could uh, we could say the, the the vector the vector between here and here. It's clearly you have to go three. You have to go three, and you have to go three as follows. Okay, to get from one to four, to get from two to five, to get from three to six, and the distance between these. You can either square this vector here, or the distance formula. You can say it is the square root of 4 take away 1 squared plus 5 take away 2 squared plus uh, 6 take away 3 squared. And you would work that out. And in this case we have the square root of 27. Okay. Now just be very careful here. Let me pick some different points. Let me imagine this is here, I don't know, negative 4, 3 and negative 1. Now the distance between these points, it would be uh, the square root, um, and let's say, as long as we do it in the right order, it's 1 take away negative 4 all squared, plus 2 take away 3 squared, plus 3 take away negative 1 squared, 
And just be careful with your negatives because that's 5 squared plus 1 squared uh, plus 4 squared. And that would turn out to be the square root of 42. Okay, so there's the formula for the distance between two points. So in particular, let's say this is x1, uh, y1, and z1, and this is x2, uh, y2, and z2. What we can do to work out the distance between two points, we can say that the distance, we take the x's away, it doesn't really matter what order, but let's actually do this one. x2, take away x1 squared, plus y2, take away y1 squared, plus z2, take away z1 squared. It's Pythagoras in three dimensions. <clears throat> Next, the vector equation of a line with a point and a direction. Imagine this is the vector equation of a line, and we usually call that R with a line under it. Imagine this is the origin, so it's 0, 0, 0. And imagine we knew a point on the line, we knew a point on the line, let's say, uh, I don't know, 1, 2, and 3, and we knew the direction that the line was going in. So we knew that the line was going, let's say, with the vector direction, negative 1, 4, and 2. Okay? Now, <clears throat> any point on the line, say I want to get there on the line, what I can do is I can get myself from the origin to this point, and then I can get myself a certain lot of that direction. So maybe it might be one of those directions, two of those directions, and three of those directions, and I find that point. So in general, for any point on the line R, it's going to be the point on the line, or the position vector from, from the origin to the point on the line, which we might call A. And it's going to be some lots of the direction, which we usually call the vector B. So in this case, our vector equation of the line would be the position vector to get from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 2, 3, which would be 1, 2, 3, plus some lots, lambda lots, of the direction, which would be negative 1, 4, 2. And that would be the vector equation of the line. We usually, uh, it's nice to combine it like 1 uh, minus lambda, 2 plus 4 lambda, and 3 plus 2 lambda. It's usually helpful to combine these column vectors for questions we're doing. So there's the vector equation of the line when you have a point on the line and you have the direction that the line's going in. Next, imagine you have the vector equation, you have a line here, which again is R. But imagine this time you're told that a point on the line is 1, 2, 3, and you know another point on the line which is negative 4, 3, and 8, let's say. Okay, and again, you've got your origin down here, which let's say is 0, 0, 0. Now, we know in general, the vector equation of a line is A, where A is a point on the line, plus lambda lots of B, where B is the direction the line's going in. Now, we have a point on the line. In fact, we've got two, but let's just call that one R A. The question is, do we have a direction of the line? Well, the direction of the line B is going to be this vector take away this vector because we want to go, we want to find how to get from here to here. And clearly, if I call this uh, A1 and this one A2, to get from here to here is going to be, um, oh, sorry, to get from here to here is going to be negative A1 plus A2 or a2 take away a1. So it's going to be negative 4, 3, 8, subtract 1, 2, 3, which is going to be negative 5, 1, and 5. And let's just think if that makes sense. If To get from 1 to, neg to negative 4, I have to go negative 5. To get from 2 to 3, I, uh, I add 1. And to get from 3 to 8, I must add 5. So the direction of this line is negative 5, 1, and 5. So the first thing we do with these sorts of questions is find the direction. We do that, subtract that to get the direction. And then we have a point on the line. So we can say that the vector equation of the line is 1, 2, 3 plus lambda lots of negative 5, 1, 5. And we can combine these as I did before. 1, subtract 5 lambda, 2 plus lambda, and 3 plus 5 lambda. And we're done for any lambda. Okay, next. 
uh, the intersection of two lines. Suppose we had a line here and a line here, and that line is uh, r equals a plus lambda b, and this line here is r equals, I don't know, c plus, uh, not lambda, but mu d. Okay? If I want to find whether these two lines intersect, I make these two vectors equal to each other. Now, in our previous questions, uh, we had one equation with 1 minus lambda, 2 plus 4 lambda, 3 plus 2 lambda. So, 1 minus lambda, 2 plus... So, I could call it 1 minus lambda. This is just an example. 2 plus 4 lambda. And 3 plus 2 lambda. And let's just assume this one here is 1 minus 5 lambda. 1 minus 5 mu. Let's use a different letter. 2 plus mu and 3 plus 5 mu. Just as an example, to find where they intersect, I make these two equations equal each other. And what I do is I call them equation 1, 2 and 3 and try and solve two of them for mu and lambda and check that they both give it at the same intersection point. If when you're doing this you find you can't solve it, then the lines do not intersect. Okay, the angle between two vectors. Suppose you have a vector, two vectors, and you have their directions. We have vectors A and B, and this one say, I don't know, 1, 2, negative 4, and this one's negative 3, 6, and 1. Then if you want to find the angle between them, you use this formula. Cos of that angle is always a dot b, a dotted with b, over the modulus of a, the modulus of b. Where a and b are directions, a dot b is defined to be the top no the x numbers times together, so 1 multiplied by, in this case it would be 1 multiplied by negative 3, plus the, the y numbers multiplied together, 2 multiplied by 6, plus the z numbers multiplied together, and in this case, we would get ourselves negative 7, uh, 12 subtract 7, we'd get ourselves 5. The modulus of 8 is the magnitude of that, so it's the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus negative 4 squared, and the modulus of b is going to be the square root of negative 3 squared plus 6 squared plus 1 squared. You substitute that into this formula, inverse cos it, and that's your angle. Now imagine I had two vector, uh, the next thing to note is that when are two lines perpendicular to each other, when would we get two lines that are perpendicular, i.e. a right angle, well we know if that was vector A and that was vector B, and we know that in general cos theta is A dot B over uh, mod A mod B, then if it was 90 degrees, cos theta would be 0, so a dot b would be 0. So if we can show that a dot b equals 0, then they are perpendicular. Conversely, if we know they are perpendicular, we can assume that a dot b are, is equal to 0. So it goes both ways. Next, the angle between two vector equations of lines. Suppose we had two vector equations of lines, and say I said that is, I don't know, 1, 2, 3 plus lambda, minus 1, 2, and 4. And I said this equation is R is, I don't know, 2, 4, 8, plus mu lots of negative 3, uh, 4, and 1. And I want the angle between the two lines. Well, what I do is I care about their directions. All I do is I worry about the direction of this line, which is negative 1, 2, 4. The direction of this line which is negative 3, 4, 1. That can be my a, that can be my b, and I use cos theta is a dot b over mod a, mod b. And I can totally ignore the position vectors here. These, they've got nothing to do with the problem that I'm going to try and solve. Okay, what else do we need to know? And um, There's a few other trig formulas that we occasionally need to know um, to solve these type of problems. I'm just going to say these just so you know. If you've got a right angle triangle, 
Um, that's the angle in question, that's the opposite, that's the adjacent, that's the hypotenuse. You obviously need to know your so katoa, which is that sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan theta is opposite over adjacent. And a non-right angle triangle, these ones tend to come up a fair bit. If you know the length of, if you've got an angle and you've got the length of two sides, maybe A and B, then the area of this triangle, whereas not right angle, oh by the way, the area of a right angle triangle is a half the base times the height. But if it's a non-right angle triangle and you've got two sides, use a half AB sine of the angle in between them. And that's about it for vectors. There's a recap of everything you need to know to revise. If you need more help, go through the, the 10 detailed tutorials on my channel.